Dust English Vinyl Mix LTRT Compressed. 16th of October, Stanley starting the sculpture. Okay, action. The theme is on bird flu. There are two influences besides reading the paper, what's happening in Europe, which is going to be global because these birds migrate. One of the symbols in Portugal is the rooster. So there's a big sign outside of the restaurant, the rooster, and up the street, there are little sculptures of the rooster. It so happens, this is the Chinese year of the rooster. It's going to be called Bird with Mask. Now, going outside something very important. How do we start the film? So one, two, three. One, two, and then. Okay, so one, two. No, start off one, two, three. One, two, three. Then one, two, and... Okay, one, two, three. One, two. It was the winter of 2003 when I first met Stanley as I entered Walsh's bookshop on St. Laurent Boulevard. At the back, he sat reading an art book. Late 70s, Russian hat, and prolifically high cheekbones. He reminded me of my adoptive Russian father, Marius, and something stirred in my soul. I followed him up some rickety wooden stairs to his sculptor's studio above Bursa Monuments, where he unveiled his masterpiece for me, Pink Lady. I fell in love, literally. When I was a kid, I found a piece of wood, and on the side lane, there was a surface with very, like, sandpaper surface, like cement, but very sandy, and I was rubbing it, you know, until I shaped the knife. And then I went to the corner, on the around, there was a hardware shop, and I dipped it in red. It's just sort of a recreation, but this was... Uh, my first little car. Where did you used to live, Stan? I lived on Esplanade and Fairmount, between Fairmount and uh, St. Peter. So, shall we go? Yes. Let me tell you a story. I was born here in Montreal. My grandparents uh, came over in, in 1904 with a wave of Jews. Uh, a lot of the area downtown, which is today the main, was populated by a lot of refugee Jews from Eastern Europe. My parents were quite impoverished in many ways, so we had to invent our amusements. It's a recreation of the first work I did when I was a kid. I used to sit on the steps here. Now I was a little taught about flying there. Okay. Here. You would sit you know, here? I, that intrigued me. Because right on the top was the Ten Commandments, you know, the Hebrew letters that symbolic of each commandment. Both my parents love art, so I was very fortunate. My, where I lived was like a little art gallery. Antique furniture, paintings, carvings. It doesn't feel like so much time has gone by. I left here when I was nine years old, 1939. 
Sometimes I feel like a longest child. After taking a aptitude test, finishing high school, uh, I see 89 in Ray with a red circle. Now this is out of 100 visual questions. And uh, she said, uh, you did very poorly. You got 11% in art. I suggest you go into clerical work. And I said to myself, in my gut, I'm a sculptor, I want to be a sculptor. When I was studying at the Museum of Foreign Arts, Arthur Lismer, and one of his lectures gave me one clue which shaped all my future travels and study different cultures. And he said, quote, if you want to study an art form, you have to go where it was created. Stanley's prophecy was fulfilled and he became a sculptor and printmaker and also an impassioned traveler. As if this became his way of escaping from the Montreal art scene, he so often felt estranged from. Thanks to Dr. Lisma's influence and a scholarship, Stanley left for Mexico, where he set to discover the ancient carving techniques of the pre-Columbian civilizations. Another scholarship took Stanley to Florence, Italy, where he untangled some long hidden secrets of Michelangelo's techniques while studying under the last maestro of marble carving, Vittorio Gambacciani. These discoveries led him to collaborate with the writer Irving Stone on the book, The Agony and Ecstasy. Stanley came back to Montreal for his first exhibition, which he dreamed would, combined with the publishing of Stone's book, give him the artistic recognition he so long yearned for. But the exhibition of his marble works did not stir the critics. He also got little acknowledgement from Stone which was the beginning of the thematic of betrayals in his life. He later accused Stone of plagiarism. This sunk him into a profound identity crisis, which he thought he could resolve by going back to his roots, Israel. Once in Israel, he set to recreate the Ten Commandments in multicolored stone cut prints an Inuit technique he had discovered and innovated before leaving home. Here he was seeking for what he thought was his real identity. Yet even in the land of his ancestors, he felt a stranger and decided finally to go back to Canada in search for the flavor of Canadian art, which he eventually found in a little studio, 3884 St. Lawrence Boulevard, which he thought was the center of cultural Canada. The Buddhists, they say the soul resides in the abdomen. And they often call it, in today's terms, gut feeling. That's what I rely on most. I've done my geographic traveling. Now, my traveling is inward. Uh, Stanley, I, I want you to come and stay with me, <laughs> to be my partner, to be my roommate, to be my... Uh, your elder brother to be... I don't think I could live with anybody because I could wake up in the middle of the night and decide to work. Now, who's going to tolerate that? And I do it. I'm totally deep yeah. I, I work when I feel like working. All Same I'm thing going. when I'm hungry. I eat. Now, I remember the first time when I got married and I put on this music, which I love, classical. And my, my former wife said, I hate that music, I said. Boy, I'm in trouble. I, I was really touched by your proposal. For the time being, I, I got to continue on my, my lifestyle. It seems to be uh, good for me. I produce a lot, and that's of utmost, utmost importance. So I keep my lifestyle, which obviously is good for me. As long as I am producing, I'm happy. If I don't, I'm dead.
people ask me to go to organized religion. I say every day I go in my studio. That to me is paradise. I have a hammer and chisel in my music. I don't want anything else. As a sculpture in stone, stone became compressed dust, only to be released when I carved. Every day when I go up the steps, I not only see the names of people I've known, they're no more. Here are stones that are symmetrical, have no dynamic quantities of weight, balance. Whatever is aesthetic is gone. I work for the living, and downstairs they work for the dead. Ideal atmosphere of yin and yang. To develop your own way, just like your fingerprint is unique, go into the world, study get back to your roots, get a studio, and work and work. But surround yourself by your own work. And one day, you'll come into your studio and be influenced by your own work. Then you'll be coming to your own. There are people who come here who search Annie Lewis. It's someone who is important, Annie Lewis. Il a contribué à, à la rue Saint-Laurent, le, pas le développement, mais c'est un personnage. Tu comprends? Ben, cette année, Lewis, on est habitué de le voir sur la rue Saint-Laurent. Il va en trottoir, il vient s'asseoir sur la terrasse, puis il jase avec tout le monde. Tout le monde connaît cette année, Lewis. C'est comme un, une personne de bande dessinée, tu vois? <rire> Moi, ça, je sais pas, c'est un artiste. Je connais cette année depuis longtemps, là. The main deli was Stanley's haunt, where he believed with a passion the best smoked meat was made. After sharing many smoked meat sandwiches, he convinced me that I absolutely had to make a film on his favorite culinary delight. I did not want to make this bloody film. I was busy at film school with other dreams in my mind. And when I suggested it in class, everybody laughed. It was Stan's comical persistence saying, it's archival, gotta be done. Our team embarked for a long year of sampling, tasting and testing tons of Stan's sacred meat. It's yummy. You know how you how you overcome a temptation? Indulge. Mm -hmm. I like. I'd love to indulge. Can I have a little Singapore? <laughs> now I'd like to photograph with a camcorder the three-dimensional rooster, which is on a sign. Looking here, to your right. Uh, down, down, down. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's it. So I, I've just been looking over this. Now, before I start, I have to figure out or see the personality of the stone. This is the layers of it. Now, that's the color of the stone. And I'm going to be working on this side. Now, press it in. Everywhere you hear the same ping, 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 ping. Click, click, click would indicate a, a crack. If the crack is near the edge, 
I could work it down. If it's too big near the center, then I have to abandon the stone. So I want to get a working volume. You got food and shelter? What kind of food? Oh, I don't know, peanuts or something. Yeah! <laughs> All right, cool. I noticed when you were working there for the last two minutes, there's pieces of stone falling on me. That's why I cover up a lot, because those pieces Oh, yeah, it's all over the place. Well, get used to dust. You're going to be covering it for a million years. Get used to it. Absolutely. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow at 9, eh? Yeah. 9? Oh, yeah, you got it. Ryan, the homeless animator and artist, reunited once more with Stanley in 2005 on the main, where they formed a mischievous duo, hanging out in the delis and bars, believing they were still living the glory of their beatnik past, becoming the mascots of the main. Spot. Good. Where's your flower? There it is. It's called a uh, for forsetica. Forsetica. <laughs> forsetica. And, and, and this one here is called a nafidilia. Um, Stanley here uh, is my friend, and he does these marvelous sculptures. So I wrote this little poem about him. It's called Stanley's Stuff. Stanley's Stuff. Stanley's Stuff. I can't get enough of Stanley's stuff. He's my amigo. He's my mentor. He taught me what art was meant for. Can you come with me a minute? You see, the character, there's a law. They keep the character of the street. Farmer pre came up and they covered the old brickwork with the styrofoam. Now they were forced to take it down and they're doing it right now. We should photograph this. I'll look, right now. This doesn't belong to the sign. Oh, Farmer. Sign. They're forced to take it off and put it back what, what it was like with the war sign. Not the sign, oh. be a small farmer free, but the oh, original oh, brickwork. Oh, okay. They just called it with styrofoam, that's all. All going. You know, this is a national treasure and they broke the law. It's all coming down and it's gonna cost them. Wow, I guess A lot. Yeah. yeah. St. Lawrence Boulevard or the Maine. That famous Montreal crossroads randomly brought immigrants up its sidewalks with their carts and dreams, the streets synonymous with chance and change. Later, the beatniks arrived, artists such as Leonard Cohen and Stanley Lewis leaving their mark and name. en amour avec ses œuvres, avec son, avec son travail, c'est normal. Mais les gens, faut qu'ils voient ses œuvres. Tu sais, dans son studio, on peut rien voir. Il y en a qui sont empilés. T'es déjà allé, moi aussi, ils sont empilés. Il y a tellement de poussière. On les voit pas. J'aimerais que ce soit dans une galerie, il y a un vernissage. J'aimerais que tout le monde voit les œuvres de Stanley Lewis. Moi, je sais que c'est un grand artiste. I've been here for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I haven't exhibited 
Because that whole exhibit over these last 20 years, a lot of these works would have been gone to collectors and everything. It gave me an opportunity to be influenced by my own work by having them here. So these sculptures got to be seen in totality because they're very closely knit in relationships. Mm -hmm. You see, Stan, if the studio was easier to enter, the thing is, is that you can't have, you know, it. we can't appreciate it. When I spoke about marketing, you got angry because I'm not talking about your work in a box, but it has to be presented to people so they know. 50 Don't years. forget, you work with the curator, they put on a catalog, not you. No, I know. The curator does but that. But they have to know where this information is. Wow. But Stanley, do you think a curator is going to come and... <laughs> You're damn right. You think they'll come under there and pull it off? How come I had all these shows? What did they do? They came and looked. Tell me, in this modern day of stress, you really think some curator is going to walk up here That's right. and start getting into the dust? That's right. Well, don't you... That's the way they're born. This is born out of dust. Okay. death, 33 years of rejection by the Canada Arts Council, chemical poisoning and dismissal from his sculptural class at the Sadie Brofman, a Montreal Jewish cultural centre, brought about Stan's first series of nervous breakdowns. Yet the daughter taken from him as a child due to his irrational behaviour, later diagnosed as bipolar disorder, was what scarred him emotionally the most, he said. He never saw her again. By the late 80s, he was temporarily institutionalized. Finally, he chose a self-imposed exile in his studio home on the Main, where he turned his back on the art scene and happily set about going back to his roots, stone carving, finding simple happiness in the everyday things. Seven in the morning, we're going to see how smoked meat is made. So here we come, Stan. La 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 la. <laughs> Which one was it? Stanley made his directional debut with us and literally took over our job. At one point, I thought he should be a filmmaker as well as a sculptor. The flavor of the main. Once we got Peter doing it with the steam coming out, putting down the close up of the slicing, and here the. And then making a sandwich. Then we'll have a platter. Mm -hmm. We all want to get a good portrait of you. Yeah. And cutting the meat. You know, take it on a steamer and make it a good sandwich. Probably get behind the counter for that. Final product. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ah, after seeing the spicing, the marinating, the smoking, the steaming, this is the result. The birth of a smoked meat. Mm. I can taste the flavors when I close my eyes. I have an interesting shot. Okay. What's this? Now, uh, I would like uh, uh, Jeanette to ask to ask this question on camera. What do I think of Stanley? What do you think of Stanley? I'm in love with Stanley, and he knows it. Well, okay, I've got to see this. That's the color. Layered. Oh, that's beautiful. I know. You I know. It has been psyching me out for, for two months. I haven't touched it just by looking at it. I could do I, it. Yeah. <laughs> it has to befriend me. Yeah. Can you show the camera that? This is the most beautiful piece of stone. It's got blonde, black, it's blonde, layered, black. Layered, yeah. That's a deep red. Layered, blonde, black, blonde, yeah. black. And when Stanley is, is, is going to make all these things around. That's it, right. It's going to have convolutions of these veins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's... So it's, I'm going to try to little... use that convolution for the feathers, you see? It? They're going to flow like this as I go in and out, as I undulate, make undulations on the surface. Right. This got me going. That. Bird, bird flu <laughs> confirmed. Bird flu confirmed. That's what really pushed me, got me... I, I know, but listen, listen, yeah. Stanley, Stanley. Energized. Stanley, I have to tell you, I'm an alley cat, right, so I don't give a shit. Uh, and you can't stop birds from migrating, can you? No, but, you know, nor can you stop cancer. I was in a hospital for 24 hours, and they were doing all these examinations, you know, and uh, the doc doctor comes by and says, where do you get your energy from? Uh, and I'm going, geez, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, it's probably from Stanley's sculptures, I suppose. I don't know. Where do I get my energy from? <laughs> but, you know, we are full of shit, so let's carry on. I speak everything. The language of love. The language of love. My name is Lorna. Very sophisticated. Lorna Louise. What is your name? Stanley Louise. Oh Lewis. my God. There you go. Oh my God. Oh my God. Where have you been all my life? We're here, we're here, sweetheart. <laughs> you come and join us. We're going to have some stuff. Come on. Dig it. I want it here. A uh, salmon thing, you know. Oh, well, we're having what salmon? We're having smoke. Bye, Harvey. Thank you. See you. Stanley, like a protective father, witnessed his friend live an important artistic revival. Where several documentaries and an Oscar-winning short animation, Ryan, brought him into the limelight with gusto. <laughs> Yet, despite a Hollywood Oscar and the ever-eager press, Stan and Ryan remained the merry pranksters of the Boulevard Saint Laurent. All the perishables, it's all empty now. Things are happening. We lost the St. Lawrence Bakery, then Warsaw moved out, and now Simcha is not long. And Ryan Larkin certainly has a few months to live. But how do you feel inside? Ryan's your friend. It's a great loss because uh, when it comes to talking about his mates, it's amazing how clear his mind becomes. And that's what he lived for, his films. And he certainly made a contribution to Canadian filmmaking. Does he come up here as much to oh, the studio? Oh, often when it gets very, very cold, he likes to come and and warm his toes. He keeps quiet and he 
he watches me work and he said, I'd love to get back to sculpture. But now it's like a man against himself, unfortunately. He says, we're, we're his own worst enemy because his drinking and smoking is contributing to shortening his life. And what I hear, sadly, is that he has only a few months to live. And that's a great, great, um, uh, how would I put it? Uh, tragedy because uh, so much more could creativity could could be exteriorated there and it's going to come to an end soon but his films will live on I've known Stanley for about 45 years and he's arrogant uh, what that's okay me too I'm arrogant you know hey you want a shot at me, you know. But I love Stanley and he loves me. We are good friends. The thing I wonder about Stanley is his next uh, sculpture, you know, like it's got to be a fucking good sculpture. He is a, one of Canada's most famous sculptures and he was my teacher, you know, as a sculptor. He presented me with a huge, uh, enormous block of wood and said, carve it, carve it. And I spent like months carving this fucking thing. And it was a beautiful sculpture that I made. He was my uh, mentor, you know, he was my teacher. <laughs> He's also my friend, you know, fuck, I love him. He tolerates me, I tolerate him. But Stanley is absolutely wonderful man. And a great artist. I work with raw stone, it's a very primal material, but it provokes primal symbols. Starting with Moses on the top of Mount Sinai, getting engraved tablets on stone. The word Hebraic. I B R E I, Ivri, which means people of the dust. The concept that we come from dust and we return to dust. hier soir ici. Il était ici? À quelle heure? Est-ce qu'il était bien? Oui? Bien, parce que Janet est ici, elle avait rendez-vous avec lui à 10 heures, puis euh, elle est allée voir à son studio, puis il n'était pas là. Pour ça, je me demandais comment il était hier soir. Est-ce qu'il a mangé? Oui, il a mangé. Il marchait bien, oui? OK. Alors, on va espérer qu'il n'y a rien d'arrivé là. OK, bye, Peter. Il était ici hier soir. Des fois, je le vois passer de l'autre côté de la rue. Et je me dis, OK, il marche, il est correct, tu sais. Parce que des fois, je ne sais pas où il va. Des fois, il va chez Schwartz, hein. Il va euh, au Vieux-Saint-Laurent souvent. Euh... Mais là, c'est vrai, ça fait comme un 3 quatre jours que je ne l'ai pas vu. Oh, mon Dieu! Le pire, là, c'est tout ce qui va arriver, là, Janet, c'est qu'il va mourir tout seul. So, yeah, it's 11, 12 days, two weeks, three weeks that he's in hospital here. Yeah. It's not the same without Stan here, eh? No, it's not, because uh, you notice things when, the, when not gone, but when they're not... Hmm. A part of time when they're busy somewhere else and they're mm. not here, you notice it. And, 
and it's, it's very difficult. I know he's a pain. He's in everyone's everything, but... There are times I, I like to, as he walks, to kick him, but I can't do it. I can't bring it up to do it. I love that guy so much. I love him. We miss him. We miss you. I hope to see you soon. It's not time. It's not time. No, no. He's still young. You can still hit the ladies. You know what's going on. I know what's going on. Yeah. I want chicken, I want... Yeah. <laughs> no tipping. You don't have to tip, yeah? No. Make nice. me my bed every night. Nice people. Yeah. Friendly. Mm. They scrub me, walk me. Yeah. It's been two months. You've been away. It gives you a good time. It's like a retrospective exhibition. So that's what you've been Look doing? Look what you've been doing in Italy, and Mexico, and Israel. How do they tie in? What stones will I need? What themes are ahead? Uh, once I get my hammer and chisel, it might be opposite. That's only thinking about it. I've been redoing older works. At the time, they were, the, piece, the piece was right. But now, certain elements aren't what I should have really used. See, I've grown, the piece has. I gotta bring it up to my standards as of now. Last night, they started getting the heart pain. The heart. They bring in the card, what do you call it? The CG. Right. Last night. Uh -huh. They all won't let me you gotta go out of here until I'm. Okay. You left those up. What <laughs> did I leave out then? Birth of a smoke me at the name. That was literally done in five minutes to give but flyers out. But there's a reason why I wanted in. Yeah, Stanley, Stanley, can Whatever you... Whatever I do, it is a reason. Stanley, can you just <laughs> listen to me, please? Birth of the smoke meat at the main at Briggs. At Briggs but the name of the reason. film, but the name of the film is just Birth of the Smoke Meat, not Birth of the Smoke Meat at the main. But how would I know where the main store is? But it, but... It's the, like a subtitle. It's the subtitle. Oh, okay. So which will we can you correct that? Say, there are many smoky things. Yeah, but we put that in the main. That was just to put in the front window. You putting it up now? I put it up just just it for is. a week. Okay. Yeah. We well, I decided I mean, it should be held the official launching the week after Labor Day as a pickup. Oh yeah. And we're gonna plan it because he finally he. Uh, allowed uh, launching to be held at his restaurant. Nice. Free smoke meat yeah. for invitees. Stan's innate passion to create kept him going whilst in hospital. His hands always darting, alert and so eager to touch and feel, now betraying him. He was so sick, his strength sapped. But nevertheless, he was determined to finish the DVD cover for Birth of the Smoke Meat, which he wanted to dedicate to his old friend, Peter Vavaro, the owner of the main Delhi Steakhouse, his hangout. His two month stay in hospital had weakened Stan, that man with the majestic swagger who walked down the boulevard like a king.
One day he discharged himself to go home, and he who walked up those wooden stairs was only a shadow of the man he used to be. I remembered the first time I met him as he pounded the steps, strong, vital, and on top of his world. I followed behind to his front door. It had been a long time since I had been here. Winter had taken the colors away, fading with time. There were some moments of silence as he remet his beloved home and sculptures once more. Then he pushed me away. He needed this time. He shut himself away in isolation for three days and nights while bidding goodbye to his studio world. He instinctively knew he would never see again. It's Mexico one stand, Portugal two. World Cup fever. I like that. Yeah, the World Cup fever. Ima right. Imagine all the Mexicans in the stands, they're dancing with their sombreros. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, hombre, ye viva la Mexico. 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 Oh, oh, you are Mexico. I, you go to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. La, 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 la. Na, 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 Mexico. It's the 21st of June. I haven't done this. No one's actually sat and filmed me talking about Stan. So this is the time. I came back from the hospital this morning. Portugal and Mexico were playing. And he'd been for another scan and they put tubes down his mouth and couldn't talk very well. Stanley couldn't even talk last week. He couldn't move. His whole body had swollen up. And we were informed that he actually, he was dying and that if all the preparations had to be, to be made. This morning we laughed, we joked. He ate his egg and toast. And he told me that he wanted to get out and preparations are being made for him to maybe go to a little room and annex of the hospital. It would be my dearest, deepest wish. Um, he says he still has things to do. Miracles happen. Stanley, I am so disappointed uh, that you are dying. However, uh, I too am dying. Uh, and, and I shall always remember, remember you. And I, I want to tell you, sadly, I do not have the courage to go and visit you in the hospital. I am Stanley's, <laughs> I don't know, surrogate nephew. <laughs> I suppose that I'm, he is my teacher. Uh, he will always be my teacher, and I'm so sad, you know, that he, he might be going away. Uh, I would like for Stanley to, to authorize that I can have access to his studio. I, I will continue to pay the rent and stuff. Uh, and I'll also continue his last sculpture, which I am aware about. Okay. Stanley, what the fuck are you doing in a hospital? Come back to your studio. If you don't come back to your studio, I'm gonna take it over and finish your sculpture. What do you think about that? <laughs> do not die on me, you know, fuck.
corazón, corazón, no me quiere matar, corazón, corazón, corazón. Stan worked all his life with raw stone, marble, earliths, and Montreal limestone. So the temporary shrine left at his grave, a little mound of hand-painted rocks created by his friends of the main, was ironically befitting. Stanley bequeathed his estate to a friend before he died, whilst the creditor took his cherished masterpiece, Pink Lady. A whole body of work dissipated, scattered here and there. Over time, I stopped trying to unravel what had really happened at the end of Stanley's life and accepted the challenge in front of me to finish the work we had begun and to preserve his legacy with his story. Three years later, Sheila, Stanley's sister, wrote, inviting me to Philadelphia to complete my research. As she ended her letter, she mentioned a visit to her daughter, Brenda, where I would meet with Stan's pink lady, who stands at the portal to the house, she said. There in the world of nature stood Stan's first creation, the original pink lady, from which the second was inspired, sculpted whilst in Italy under his beloved maestro, Vittorio Gambacciani, in 1957 so desired by Irving Stone and exhibited in the Museum of Fine Arts at his first show, the vital missing link of Stanley's archive, protected carefully by the family for 50 years and written about extensively in his letters home. Dear Mom and Sheila, I spent the day looking round the marble quarries of Carrara, mountains of marble. It was another world. I bought a magnificent piece of marble called Rosa Aurora from Portugal. It has a warm, fleshy pink tone and weighs almost 900 pounds and stands close to five feet high. I want this to be my major work. It will mean a good two, three months work and will probably be my last before leaving for home. It's so beautiful just to sit and look at the color like strawberry ice cream. As the maestro said, it's like flesh. Yours, Stanley, Florence, October the 13th, 1957. Pas à zéro Non 